Hello again, long time no see. It turns out that I've been doing other bits and pieces in between working on the media app. Small clue, Google I.O. is coming up, so that's probably what it is. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to do is uh, at least talk about one feature that has been very experimental. Um, always fun to be on the cutting edge of stuff and no different in this particular situation. Uh, I've been working very closely uh, with one of the Chrome engineers, Peter Bevelu, um, and his team as well uh, to try and get some background fetch into the app. So what is background fetch? Background fetch is, imagine you were doing a normal foreground fetch, the one you call fetch in your code, okay? Um, that works, but if you close the tab or you go to a different URL or whatever, uh, the fetch stops. That's how the, all the networking stuff normally works. Background fetch is different insofar as uh, you trigger it from inside your service worker, it goes off, makes a load of requests uh, that you ask it to make, and then uh, you get an event that fires in your service worker to say, hey, that uh, that download is finished, what do you want to do with it? And you can do whatever you want with it. You can put them in the cache, you can put them in the, the responses in IndexedDB. It's really up to you what you do. Uh, but that makes a, a much more robust download experience, and especially for something like this, a media app is probably one of the, the perfect vehicles for trying background fetch out because, hey, we've got big videos, and what if you want to kind of go off and do something else? Well, obviously, it makes sense for you to kind of keep that download going in the background. So it's very early days. Uh, this is the kind of the very first implementation of background fetch that landed in Chrome. So, you know, it's it. There's, I'm sure there's more to do. I know there is more to do, um, but I just wanted to at least show you around this the code as it is today, um, just so you've seen it. All right. So um, let me show you what actually is different on the front end. So I have on. Uh, on the browser, I or in the browser, on the browser, what is the correct thing? In, on, by, with, from. I don't know. One of those, with the browser involved, I have enabled uh, experimental web platform features in about flags, which you should do if you want to test this. And that means that we then uh, get background fetch. In fact, let me show you in the console. If I say uh, background fetch, there you are. You see background fetch fetch? <laughs> I love the naming of these. Background fetch manager. That's a thing. Uh, that won't exist in window otherwise. So if you actually wanted to feature detect it, you'd say, uh, what would you say? You'd say background fetch manager in window. Boop. True. Or in Chrome stable or whatever, it would be false. So there you go. So uh, the background fetch manager, background fetch, and all those other things are available in the window. They're also available in the service worker. Uh, so when I said before, the service worker does a background download, it's only partly true. You can make the foreground do it. Don't, don't, we'll get to that. Anyway, let me show you uh, around the code a little bit. So if you've had a look at the code itself, you'll have seen there's an offline cache uh, JavaScript file, which has sort of grown over time. And I think it's generally true of this app now that um, if, you, if you remember what way back at the start, I said, I know nothing about media. And this has been a journey of exploration for me. Knowing now what I know, I think I would have structured the app uh, a little differently. Uh, but that's the nature of these things. Sometimes you kind of get to the end and go, OK, I learned a lot. Uh, it's not that it's bad. It's just that I don't know. It just it's sort of grown organically over time. And I think I would love to kind of take a step back and go, OK, that's how these pieces would normally interact if all these features had been available at the start. There we go. Right, background fetch. So here's here's the thing here. I have uh, it, some code that says, if you support background fetch, which is pretty much what I just showed you. It's that uh, background fetch manager in window. Uh, that will be true or it'll be false. If it's true, then I do a, a download in the background uh, otherwise, I fall back to what I had before, which, if you recall, is the the download where we sort of see the pie chart and everything else, and it's a foreground fetch. It happens in the page. If you close the page, eh, nothing I can do for you. Uh, so download background, what happens in there? Well, what I do is I, uh, by this point, when I call download, back, download background, I know which files I need, which is like the video file, the artwork. Uh, all the stuff that I wanted, I would be fetching to make sure this thing is available, like the HTML as well, so on. 
Uh, I wait till the service worker is ready. This is a promise that resolves whenever the service worker is available. So if there's no service worker available, then background fetch won't be available. Uh, so that's just how it is. Um, and I uh, fire off uh, an event just for the UI, but I also post the message over to the service worker, the active service worker, with uh, an action which happens to be offline. Uh, the name that I want it to to use and the asset. So the name is uh, an important thing. You tag a particular background fetch so that if you have multiple background fetches going on, uh, they have different names uh, in there so that you can differentiate. So you can actually have multiple downloads going off at the same time. So on the service worker side, uh, let me fire that up. Serviceworker.js, there we are. On message, perfect. Uh, in the case of the offline, uh, I just pull out those uh, values and then I call into this separate class that I've made called background fetch helper and I, add, yeah, I ask it to do the fetch. So that leads us very neatly onto the background fetch helper, in which we can look in here. And the background fetch helper, the fetch call here. Uh, so the first thing I do is I'm using Jake's IDB keyval library uh, because for two reasons. One is uh, IDB is the only store that's available inside a service worker because that's where this code is running. Uh, local storage isn't available. And two, I don't like working with IDB directly if I can avoid it. And Jake has written this very small, very helpful uh, key value store that works with IDB. So well done, Jake. Uh, but what I do is if you bear in mind that when you start a background fetch, you may also then close the tab or any number of things could happen. But what, because what's happening is the fetch is being handled by some other machinery somewhere. And so we need to kind of between states, if you close the tab and you brought the tab back, um, we need to know, hang on a minute, there should be a background fetch in progress or, or what have you. Um, and also when we get all the various responses in from the background fetch, we kind of have to tie it back to the original request. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. So you can see what I do is I set, based on the tag name, I store in IDB the assets that we were requesting, okay? And then I set up this background fetch, which you can see is that's the actual background fetch API here on the registration. There's now a background fetch um, property, which I think is the background fetch manager. Uh, and, or an instance of that and then you can call it dot fetch and you give it the stuff that it needs it goes off does its thing uh, at the end of which you can see we have uh, I've got currently registered background fetch fail which would be if one of the responses 404 500 did 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 or something else um, and then background fetch is if all the things that I've requested come back as 200 and or just generally a-ok -okay, uh, then we can call on background fetched so in the background fetch, now what we have to do is we kind of have to consolidate because we say get we made a request for, say, 10 files and the background fetch, let's say it succeeded, we get back 10 responses. What we have to do is we have to kind of go through and say, well, what do I do with these? Now, if you recall uh, from previous times, uh, the videos get chunked up into various pieces. And so we'll need to do the same here. We basically have to go through each of our the responses, figure out which response was it. Uh, you know, which asset was I actually requesting? And that's, we look at the, the response URL, we look at the um, asset URL, the one that we were requesting, we kind of go, oh, that must be that response for that thing. What do I do with it? Does that one get chunked? Does that one just go into the cache as it is? What am I supposed to do with that? So that's what the, the consolidation step that's, uh, that I'm doing, that's what that's designed to do here. You can see I've got like, for example, if it's not chunking, just put it straight into the cache. Um, if it is being chunked and being split up into various blocks, then we call cache in chunks. After we're done with handling that res uh, that that array of responses, then we can call this notify all clients, which is basically a post back to all available clients. So um, if you're new to service worker stuff, there's the idea that you've got one service worker which is shared amongst possibly multiple tabs. And so rather than kind of trying to figure out exactly which one of the tabs requested the background fetch, I just notify them all and just say, by the way, this background fetch happened, here's the, the tag name, and then I, I have some front-end code that consolidates that and goes, oh yes, that was, that was oh yes, I should, uh, I should throw up a, a toast and say that that was uh, downloaded. Uh, 
And then there's a bit of tear down here, which is to remove that IDB. Uh, you can see, actually, let me go down here. Uh, we delete the IDB uh, key val there so that if we were to delete the downloaded videos and then hit download again, then it would all uh, work as expected rather than kind of going, oh, I've already got something in flight there with that key uh, value pair inside IDB. Okay. So with all that kind of uh, code in place, uh, this is, let me just get rid of that. This is what it actually does. Um, so for argument's sake, so I'm doing the background fetch and I can go off to home. And as I say, in, in normals land there, you would do a notification. And I think the, the, um, the, the spec or at least the explainer for background fetch suggests that uh, there might be some UI work to do there about showing a, a notification. Uh, but nonetheless, when we come back in here, you can see I was on a completely different page, but you can see that we've actually now got the offline copy. And in fact, I can show you inside of the application here, uh, inside of the cache storage, we have the Chrome channel trailer. And th these are all the, the chunks of video and so on. So the background fetch happened, we populated the cache. And then when I came back into the page, um, I did the check that I, I would have done anyway, which is, do I have, you know, something in the cache for this video? If yes, and I'll assume that we have an offline video available to us. So the the machinery that stores and chunks and everything else is kind of agnostic to the, the front end check to see whether it exists. And that's actually been extremely useful. It means I don't really mind whether background fetch populates the cache or a foreground fetch populates the cache or anything populates the cache. So long as it's there when I load this page, I will assume that all is good uh, because there's only so many ways it could have been populated and hopefully one of them was me in my code. So there you go. Uh, that's a, a very, very speedy tour around background fetch. Have a look at the code. Um, have a look at the explainer. We'll pop that in the notes below. Uh, that's written by Jake. Um, turns out he's quite useful. Who knew? Um, Hmm. Shocker of the day. Anyway, uh, also don't forget you can comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, let me know how you get on. And I'll see you in the roundup video for the Media PWA. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Don't forget that there is more content that you can find kind of over here-ish. And if you want to subscribe, there's probably a button. I don't know, maybe there, maybe somewhere around there. Click that if you've not done that. Brilliant.